So one of the interesting things about venture capital is that you actually don't have CEOs. Um, VCs are built from partnerships. Uh, VCs are built from partnerships, and one of the great things about venture capital firms is that you don't really need to get the consensus. What you're trying to find is you're trying to find step functions, and much of what I'll speak about today is finding step functions and how can these relate to the opportunities in chatbots and otherwise. So it's a perspective of the dark side. I still get to say it's a dark side. I came in from entrepreneurship, ended up selling face.com to Facebook, and uh, eternity to Riverbed before that. So I'll start, I reviewed la my presentation from last year. And I think the three takeaways of what's changed since last year is that, and most importantly, it's not about the chatbots. It's not about the bots themselves. It's about what kind of service do you show, what kind of service do you expose through the bots or through other means. And my presentation today will be almost not about bots much more about the supporting infrastructure and the opportunities that can be done through that. What you see here is Lemonade. Lemonade is selling insurance. It happens to be through a bot interface. The second one, if you look at last year, this is just one of the examples of bots as of last year, of scripted bots. It's like, if this, then that. And you see how terrible it is and how mostly useless it is. But on the right side, this was a demo that most people thought at the time was fake. Right, the Google demo of showing how a computer can actually call in and set a restaurant appointment or set any other form of interaction between humans. And they released it. And it's pretty freaking amazing. So if you look at this past year, technology has evolved dramatically. And technology creates step functions, and venture capital needs step functions. Why is that? We manage in Aleph One $150 million. To be good at what we do, we need to return 450 million, so 3x that within 12 years. We will typically own about 10%, 10 to 15% of a company at the point of exit, which means we need to be part of $4 billion of economic value generation to do our job. Right? Company is worth $4 billion in total, which means if it's a portfolio of 20 companies, we need to sell each and every one of those companies for 200 million at least. Right? That's impossible. The likelihood of that is, just as an FYI, is 0.1% uh, to the power of 20. Not going not gonna to happen. Uh, we, alternatively, we can be part of economic value generation of two companies like Lemonade, say, at $2 billion, and that's possibly more likely. Right? That's just 0.02% to the power of two. Just as an FYI, why are step functions so important? You, we need companies selling at least $100 million in order to do our exit targets. I, what I'll speak about today is the tech changes that happened and why they're interesting for us and possibly for you. Two portfolio companies I'll use, uh, Logix and Lemonade, in order to showcase chatbot-oriented innovation. And I'll, show, I'll share some of the opportunities that we think, I think, um, could be big companies in the coming years. So first, the very first technology change is what you see in voice recognition. So if you look at voice recognition, you can see that in 2006, the NSA started using voice recognition in order to find specific segments, specific words in everything they monitor. Now, 2006, mind you, if you look at the performance at the time, it was probably 50, 60 percent. So mostly, it's, you, you throw a coin and whether it's accurate or not. But the amazing thing is what happened 2017 and beyond. We have, in voice recognition, we have surpassed human ability. Right? So sometimes it's actually better to talk with a computer than to talk with a United Airlines representative. Right? Because a computer would actually understand you better. And interestingly, the better the technology, you see it's used more. Not surprising, but uh, small changes in technology relevance become exponential. Right? So accuracy increases value. At 80%, mostly useless. At 95%, amazingly useful, and you see exponential growth also in the usage. And that's why it's interesting. The second interesting thing is in the area of NLP, natural language processing, right? the thing that understands. So we got some input, but now we actually want to understand what it is that the person is speaking about. And not just single words, you actually want to understand the meaning. And the really interesting thing, if you look at the timeline, only in 2018, finally we have deep neural networks that listen in and work. Up until that point, it was mostly shallow. If you look at ImageNet, ImageNet is the big change 
for example, face recognition, suddenly became working about eight years ago because they were able to apply neural networks to image recognition. That has evaded us uh, for a good amount of time in how you process language and how you process text. What happened since is they found there was a technology breakthrough, which seems obvious, right, in retrospect, of how you train that neural network. What you do is you ask it all the time, what is the next word? Predict what the next word is going to be, right? If before you didn't have annotated data, you didn't have data that actually tells you this is a correct understanding and this is an incorrect understanding, that's what you need in order to train computers, in order to train neural networks. Suddenly, predict next word means that you can take all the books in the world and just say, OK, read here. What's the next word? What's the word after that? What's the word after that? And just to show you the power of this, this text was provided to a computer today, to the new neural network model. And the entire text below it was generated by a computer just asking him what's the next word. And if you read that, and I'll, I'll post uh, the presentation afterwards, it actually is a sensible story. And the incredible thing is this allows understanding text literally to the level of Q&A. You can actually ask questions, and the understanding of the text is deep enough because predicting next word actually requires understanding the sentence, understanding the paragraph, because if there's negation there, then the next word could be very different than if there weren't just a few words back. So NLP has gone amazingly well. And understanding text input is mostly solved. We're at about 85%, depending on what domain you're at. But you should assume that within the next three years, that's, that's a solved issue. Output, well, old news. Again, this is uh, the Google presentation. And it's amazing, right? A computer calls in, does a, eh, u. Actually, it sounds like a human. Deep fake is actually what's been going on in the past few months. So um, for anyone that hasn't seen that, you can basically get anyone to say anything you want in their own voice and their own language. The takeaway there is output is maybe too much solved issue. So if you look at the pipeline, this is a year old, right? Last year, I, we could not have said that. And the change means that there are opportunities generated from it. And some of the first examples, this is the typical bots that we all know and hate, right? So you set rules, and if the user doesn't go by those rules, then it doesn't work, right? And this is like terribly misconfigured, but still an experience of many of the bots today. Here, what you actually see is an actual working application that means that it's looking at the data, so it analyzes a good amount of data, and then it understands the data well enough in order to expose a natural language interface to a user that is able to ask it pretty open-ended questions. In my mind, this is the best example possible for a chatbot. But it doesn't matter whether it's interfaces chatbot. It could be buttons. It could be anything. And that's the point as I, I want to make to you is that uh, though the name of the conference is chatbots, I think the big change is text, is finally being able to understand both input, process, and output text. So uh, this on the right would probably have been magic three years ago. Like, you wouldn't believe that computers can actually do that. And the question I get asked is, so, OK, great. So there are those technology changes, but where can I find opportunities? Like, what is there to innovate? Uh, surprising, uh, now that you have more people here, how many entrepreneurs in the crowd? A bit more. OK, good. But because, like, you rock. And this is, this is uh, intended to you. So what opportunities? The first opportunity in chatbots, in my mind, is transactional conversations. Transactional versus relationship-based conversations. You actually don't want to chat with someone and build a relationship with a chatbot. But if it's transactional, it actually makes total sense. And it provides either faster, scalable, or cheaper, or all of the three. And the example with Lemonade is pretty amazing. I'm not sure whether it was in the keynote when it started. 100% of sales now of Lemonade are done via chatbots. 30% of claims are processed by chatbots, which means that it's processed in sub-seconds. Right? And actually, a chatbot in 2018 gave back more than a million dollars in claims. Right? So fully automated computer actually interfaced with customers, provided for very fast, very scalable service with no need for human operators, and gave away a million dollars, which I, I find pretty amazing. 
The other Law Geeks, uh, another uh, company in the out of portfolio, the interesting thing there, it's not a chatbot, but what it is, is text processing. So they take uh, the job from lawyers, the, the, the bad job, the boring job of NDAs, for example, non disclosure agreements. Every lawyer hates that. They analyze all the legal documents and understand what are the rules of those legal documents, right? Input, I go back to input and I go back to NLP, the processing, and they're able to understand what it is that the document says. And through that, it's able to expose that to the user. The user can use pretty much any interface. But the interesting thing is that the level of depth of knowledge that the system has of the documents and the work process is such that it actually can be done in a non-structured way, uh, which makes it super interesting. And so in my mind, the question is like, OK, so why does it matter? Like, what's the takeaway? What can I do? What's actionable with this information? And the answer is, well, a few. If you look at transactional conversations, right, at that category, there are a bunch of things. The first one is very obvious, and we actually see a good amount of companies already doing that, right? Customer service. When it's a transactional, meaning that you don't expect to build a specific relationship with that person, they're able to answer a variety of requests, they're able to reduce significantly uh, the amount of human operators. In many ways, uh, you look at humans as a margin problem. Right? They just cost more money. And the more you automate them, the better off the bottom line is. So that's obvious. Sales, again, it's a type of customer service, except you're trying to exchange dollars. So bots today, instead of the bots that we right now see in the type of just lead generation, or the entire purpose in life of that conversational system is just to get the phone number or the email, you actually see first systems that are able to sell and understand preferences of the target customer. And I think that will grow significantly. Tellers, right, bank tellers, most of the work that tellers do today can be fully automated, right? You want anywhere from withdrawing cash to deploying it. Much of that, the, bank, the banker that you work with can probably be better served uh, by a computer-based AI system. Where it becomes interesting is in surveys. Right? So there are two purposes for surveys, one which I think is good and the other one is less so. Just calling in people and asking their opinion about something, you can get that in a very cost-effective way. The problematic thing that we'll start seeing is robocallers. We don't see that as much in Israel. We do like when it's Rabi something, want to raise some money to for whatever. But in the US, it's actually a huge problem. And if you're able to create a full conversational system and you call in, it actually becomes either a sales call and it can actually become as bad as influencing people. Why is that? If I survey you about something and if it doesn't cost me anything, the subject of the survey can actually be an opinion I want to change that you have. Right? And we'll start seeing that as cost plummets. But these are, these are pretty obvious. And I think in the next two to five years, basically all of them will be done. Productivity is, in my mind, the more interesting ones. Uh, transcription is already done in domain specific today, but it's fairly, it's almost good enough for full transcription, definitely in English. Translation is how you start interfacing with people that actually don't speak your own language. So if you have a conversational system that gets any input, on the other hand, can be basically any language, any person, that's more interesting. Spam is a problem that can go away. If I can understand, I am a bot, I can understand your email. And if there is sus uh, suspicion for spam or fraud, I can actually initiate the conversation. I just reply to the email, to the other side saying, I'll ask something specific about this email. And if they answer correctly, it's like a CAPTCHA, except the CAPTCHA is contextual and is very situational specific. Right? So that can actually solve spam, and in many ways also, the other side of it is email prioritization. This email might be important. Let me check that. Let me forward it to an assistant. Let me forward it to maybe someone else that is better informed than me, and I can offload work very, very quickly. The biggest opportunity in my mind is search. Right? As most people here know, I assume, Google was only 15% better than the next uh, search engine up, uh, AltaVista at the time. But they also had a business model, never mind that. But 15% better created the huge company that Google is today. There is a lot of information that is in your brains and is not structured right now. It's not, on, it's not available. So in that sense, being able to converse with someone and find people that have that information is a huge, huge, huge opportunity. And in my mind, that's the biggest one. 
I mean, then if you want to continue this conversation, that's my email. If for the non-entrepreneurs in the crowd, uh, jobs at Aleph VC, highly recommended for basically jobs in Aleph portfolio companies. Thank you.